Well, they're, they're chosen for both ability and character. And uh, uh, for a very long time, uh, investments were handled by just me and Charlie Munger, my partner. Uh, and then uh, maybe seven or eight years ago, Charlie and I talked about the desirability of bringing on uh, somebody or maybe more than one somebody to both manage money now, but also uh, in preparation for the day that Charlie and I won't be around. Having anybody join the Berkshire family and be an integral part of investing significant money, you know, I, that's, a, that's a, it's a big responsibility. And I wanted somebody who was gonna be there for keeps. And uh, I first found Todd six or seven years ago and, and Ted five or so years ago. And, and now we're all set and they're handling $10 billion each. Uh, when we started, it was maybe two billion or so. so now I've added capital to it, but but it's one of the best decisions that Charlie and I have ever made was was uh, bringing these two on board. So just to follow up, though, Warren, I mean, was it a gut decision? You said you had all these people who potentially would want to take these jobs. It's looking at what they had done, had done, and how they had done it, and what kind of people they would be. I mean, it. Uh, uh, I want somebody uh, that. I'd be happy if they were marrying my daughter. And uh, uh, it, it's a similar type of situation. I mean, it, it, there can't be any question about character. So Ted, I mean, this is an incredible job, right? But maybe somewhat daunting. You're managing money for and with Warren Buffett. What's that like? That's terrific. You know, it's a, in many ways, it doesn't change much from my prior world where I, I ran a fund. And I've always been kind of a, a one-man band analytically and kind of our day job is reading and I spend the vast majority of my day reading. I try to make about half of that reading random things like newspapers and trade periodicals. But to be able to do that in an environment uh, like Berkshire and be able to uh, you know, learn by osmosis, by uh, being able to uh, compare notes with Warren. Uh, we get together for uh, lunch every uh, Monday, the, the three of us and Tracy, if she's in town, she'll join us. and. Uh, to compare notes on all sorts of things, uh, and it's mainly uh, you know Berkshire, Berkshire culture and uh, uh, things that have happened over the Warren's investing life. It, it's very special. I, you know, I, I first was uh, introduced to uh, uh, Warren, not physically, but uh, through a friend of mine in 1979 who said, "There's this guy who." out in Omaha that when he writes, you really should read what he writes because it's, it's got a certain clarity to it. And uh, I started reading it and it was, uh, I've read uh, over the years just about everything I think Warren's put out there. And uh, to have that as a backdrop and then come into the organization and be able to interact on a regular basis, it's terrific. It's and Ted, I know that you met Warren through a charity yes. lunch. Yeah. And Todd, I, I want to turn to you and ask you, how did you meet Warren and also what's it like working here? Well, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I echo everything Ted said. Um, I get asked a lot how my life has changed from before to after and absent moving to Omaha in terms of performing the investing function day to day, very little has actually changed uh, except the removal of some friction. Uh, in terms of the fact that you don't have monthly reporting and LPs and we have the benefit of permanent capital and so forth. But I met Warren, to go back to your, the first part of your question, through Charlie. And I called Charlie up just randomly and I had always wanted to meet him. I had been out to a few meetings and uh, I called Charlie up and we hit it off. We had breakfast for three or four hours and um, and luckily he called me a couple weeks later and we continued discussions and this kind of went back and forth for over the period of a couple months. So, so how do you guys work together? I mean, you have this Monday lunch. Do you divide up the stock market into specific sectors? I'll start Andy, with you, they, Warren. They've each got 10 million. They could put it in one stock. You know, they can, they can put it in one stock, they can put it in 10 stocks, they can put it in 100 stocks. They can, uh, there's a couple things you have to be careful of. They, they, we wouldn't ever do anything in Microsoft because because uh, Bill is on the board and it might look, no matter what the we, we wouldn't have inside information. Mm -hmm. if, we, if they were to buy something one day and something happened the next day, everybody would think we had it. So there's a few, very very few. Uh, they, we wouldn't want to go over ten percent on something that, that we already had it. But, but so there's a, 
maybe 10 stocks in total that are off limits or 20 or something, but they don't have to check with me before they buy or sell anything. Uh, sometimes they will have talked to me about something they're doing. Other times I will just look at the monthly recap I get and then see what they bought or sold. They, they, it's, it's entirely their decisions on, 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 on what they buy and sell. And diversification industries, there's no rules of any kind except avoid anything that there's a regulatory problem on. And what's your day like then? How do you I get in around seven or eight, and I read until about seven or eight at night, and uh, I go home and uh, see my family, and then I'll read uh, for another hour or two uh, in bed at night. And uh, you know, there might only be three to four phone calls the entire week, so there's very, very few interruptions. Uh, I have a great assistant who knows everything that I read, and she kind of provides everything, and there's a back and forth between us where I'll mark it up. And, uh, and give it back to her, and we have a system for filing and so forth. But it's literally just reading about 12 hours a day of everything I just uh, mentioned. Charlie describes himself as a book with legs. Yeah. <laughs> these no. these are the only two guys we could find that read as much as we did. <laughs> I, I, should, I should point out one advantage they have at Berkshire, uh, uh, of a very general sort, but we have you know dozens and dozens and dozens of businesses. And I've always said that that I'm a better investor because I've had experience in business and better businessman because I've had experience in investments. And Berkshire is about as good a place as you can find to really understand competitive dynamics and all that over the years. I like, always talk about, you know, learning to learn and being lifelong learners. And, and you know, that's something that impacted me because I started to read about that when I was in college. And, you know, I looked at the last five years for me at Berkshire and they have been the steepest learning curve of my life. And that, that's pretty powerful to say when you're 50. And uh, it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun, but it is that data set that you get exposed to of all these different businesses, all this information. And uh, as Todd said, taking that friction out of the equation. I'm not, I loved my investors when I ran a fund, but it takes time to talk to your investors. It takes time to write the quarterly letters, that sort of thing, that's, that's gone. You sound like you've been sort of a, a lifelong almost Berkshire fan. <laughs> had you gone to annual meetings previously? To I it? had, yeah, yeah. Uh, not That's as hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or a shareholder, I should yeah. say, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. And yourself, yep, Todd? Yeah, absolutely. You've been to meetings before you started working here? I had been to two before, mm -hmm. and um, but had never got to spend time with Warren and Charlie one-on-one, -on -one, obviously. And... Um, and I would echo everything that uh, that Warren just said, and that and, and the fourth category I should have listed was uh, was the operating results from our companies. We both have companies that report to us that, um, and there's almost no industry that Berkshire doesn't touch in one form or another. So if there's something that I can't count the number of times I've been looking at something where I can pick up the phone and call Mary Reinhardt or Frank Patak or Mark Donegan, and if it's in any one of their adjacent industries and they know more about it uh, in 15, 30 minutes, then I would, I would be able to accumulate in a lifetime. So, yeah. 